Man, oh man. So I guess as I guess it looks to people as if there's um there's trouble in paradise when it comes to Javante Tank Davis and um his relationship with uh, with Mayweather Promotions, and people are wondering if you know people are believing that he's out of there that he's basically going to leave them um as soon as like this contract is done because this is his next fight and after this next fight um their deal is over with and um he was saying he was talking about how you know they're making they're forcing me to to you know to fight this guy because it's you know my last fight with them and um people are you know making kind of the assumptions or the question like hey are they trying to set him up in, the way, in any way in order for him to get beat because it's his last fight are they trying to make his name look bad or something like that by the, I guess, they, the quote, the quality of opponent? And um, I don't think, I mean, I don't think that's what he meant. I think he probably might mean something like, you know, Roley is part of um, Mayweather Promotions and they probably promised him that, hey, we can get you this particular fight. So it's like, you know, let's get, you know, it's like almost like, okay, let's get this last major fight for one of our fighters who, you know, is with this guy. Instead of giving this fight to somebody else, let's do it with somebody that's in-house, that's internal. And I'm thinking that, you know, maybe they're thinking um, something like that. But, but I, you know, but that's all I think of me. You know, I guess it could be that. But as far as their relationship is concerned, um, I wouldn't just assume that he's not going to resign with them. You know, um, people have this weird notion that they think that, oh, all these fights are available for, available for Javante Tank Davis. You know, only thing you can even come close to as far as saying, hey, this fight is something that's available is maybe Devin Haney, you know. But a lot of the other fights, really no. You know, people said, talked about uh, maybe um, Gary Russell Jr. But I've heard, even with the Gary Russell Jr. fight, I've heard Tank basically saying, no, he ain't getting that fight. We ain't doing that fight. You know, so it's not even a thing where he's like clamoring for that particular fight. But everybody else, no. Ryan Garcia, they tried that already. You know, they walked away from that fight. When it comes to top rank, top rank keeps everything in the house. You know, people are like, oh, well, but it's the biggest money fight. So they go, no, they don't do big fights just because they're the, quote, biggest money fight. So those top rank fights wouldn't have been available to them. Ver uh, Ver uh, Burchell versus Vargas. is that, Are those bigger than Tank versus Vargas? I mean, Valdez, you know, is it bigger than Tank versus Valdez? Was it bigger than Tank versus Burchell? Two guys that are supposedly, you know, the type of fighters that Javante Tank Davis wants to fight, you know? Doesn't he fit the criteria? Don't they fit the criteria? So why didn't they do those fights? They're way bigger fights. But instead of doing that, they did everything in-house, right? Um, on Barbershop Conversations, um, Bob Aaron was talking about how Mayweather had contacted him about a Loma, uh, doing a Lomachenko fight and a Teofimo Lopez fight, you know? But what he did was he just kept everything in-house instead. They're like, have you spoken to him against this? They're like, no, because they want to do everything in-house. That's what they do. That's what they do. They keep everything in the house. So those weren't going to be available for him anyway. Everybody's just assuming that, oh, Lomachenko is going to be available. No. What they'll do, they'll take Lomachenko. They'll have him fight a couple of other fights because he's getting licensing fees from ESPN. Good money from them. Regardless of what he says, he's getting a substantial amount of money to hold these fights on ESPN. And he just pockets most of it. So he's looking at it like that. The way I'm, um, I'm jipping these guys and the amount of money I'm getting from them you know, over a period of time, is it more money for me to do this fight or as as, as where your fighter's getting 40% or 30% or am I better off just doing these fights over here and making the money I'm making over here? Like, what am I going to make more money off of long term? It's going to be over there, you know, so that's the bag. He doesn't care about short term stuff. That's why the Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather fight didn't happen for so long, you know, because like, yeah, that's, that was the biggest bag, right? But that was probably what, a three, four million dollar fight? How many millions of dollar fights did they, they do from that point when it was supposed to happen to when it finally happened that the, the top rank do with Manny Pacquiao? How many gates did they do? They made substantially more money than in those seven years than they would have off that Floyd Mayweather fight. Substantially more. So that's what they did. So those fights aren't available. Those fights of Lomachenko or Teofimo, those fights weren't going to happen. You know? And the one the, the one position they kind of put him, put him into is the fact that you know, this the whole thing being ordered with the Cam Voses versus whoever he fights. I don't know if it's going to be Devin Haney or somebody else. They put him into a space where that particular person, you fight them. But you're in a space where you can kind of control the situation at the same time. Because they're probably going to do the whole, you know, who made more money? How much have you generated? How much have you generated? And it's such a massive gap. It might end up being like a 80-20 type of stuff. It might be, a, you know, an 80-20s 
uh, 75 or whatever, 25 or whatever it is. It's going to be something that's going to be drastically in Javante Tank Davis's favor. You know, and that's what it's going to end up being, you know. So in a situation like that, you can basically pay them what you believe that they're worth and then have Javante Tank Davis make a substantial amount of money off of that situation. But I just, I don't know. I don't see him necessarily going anywhere else. They've done, they've done a great job with them. You know, he's been making a substantial amount of money. Um, they've been doing high gates. Um, they've been doing high pay-per-views, 230,000 plus pay-per-views at $80 a pop. Do the math. You know, the last, um, about, I think they did 3.7 plus million at the gate. He did, um, before that, they did 4 point something million at the gate. He's at this point basically doing higher numbers than, uh, than Earl Spence when it comes to the gate. What Earl Spence is getting him on right now is uh, pay-per-views. But gate-wise, he's caught up to pretty much to them. The only person he hasn't really caught up to is um, Canelo Alvarez. And if you want to talk about it worldwide, maybe you can also say um, Anthony Joshua. But for the most part, he's caught up to most people when it, when it comes to that. Right now, when it comes to his gates, when right now when it comes to his pay-per-views, he's generating higher numbers than any other person 135 and under has ever done in the history of boxing. That's where they've got him to. These other guys have 135 pounders. How are those 135 pounders doing? They have 130 pounders, 140 pounders. How are they all doing? You know, where are where are where are they in their careers? How far have they progressed? I remember when people used to laugh when they used to say, hey, Tank is going to be a star. He's going to be a star. He's going to be a pay-per-view star. And people used to laugh like, how is he, if he's not fighting Lomachenko, how is he going to be a star? The only fight that he can do, the only person he can face is Lomachenko where he could become a star or sell pay-per-views or do higher gates. But he's not fighting Lomachenko. So how is he going to do it? That's what everybody used to say. Because everybody knew so better, knew so much better. But then what happened? Everything that they said he was going to be, he, he became. You know, and these fights that are not available, that everybody keeps just wanting to think, you know, just say they're available, even though they're really not. If you look at the, the landscape of boxing and how people handle their business, they're not available. What they've been able to do with him is generate fights that were lucrative. He fought against he fought against um, uh, uh, Leo Santa Cruz, who's a multi-division champion, future Hall of Famer. They made a lot of money off of that. You know, that was a big fight. He fought against Barrios. Barrios, when he's moving up to 140 pounds, everybody's like, I don't know, man. This is a big dude. He's strong. We don't know. I hear what everybody's saying afterwards, but I remember what everybody was saying before that fight. When they were like, we don't know what's going to happen in this fight. This might be, this might not turn out good. Everybody wasn't sitting there saying, oh, he's just going to run through that guy. And we see how that guy performed against Keith Thurman, the freaking welterweight. You know, so... It wasn't like, you know, everybody, that's what I remember people saying, you know, and when he was at 130 pounds, they got him a fight against the number 130 pounder, you know, that was undefeated. They had knocked out Tevin Farmer. They got him that people act like that fight never happened either. So they've got him fights. And then, okay, what was supposed to happen is supposed to fight Roley, Roley, the Roley who people were talking about Devin Haney fighting. People were starting getting hyped up about that because it was looking like, uh, that fight might be set up, could be set up. And they started actually kind of talking. But now Tank is fighting him, it's an issue. But when Devin was going to fight him, it was cool. But now Tank was going to fight him, now it's a freaking problem. You know? And Cruz, they said that, hey, Cruz is a strong fighter. He's a tough fighter. This is not an easy bout. Everybody's trying to talk like about this kid like he's easy. This is a hard bout. He was supposed to be the next fight. They were trying to build that fight up for him. You know? And it ended up being a tough fight. It ended up being a tough fight. Which one of these fights were so easy? In the Barrios fight, he had to figure things out. It was an action-packed fight. In the Cruz fight, he got hurt. It was a tough fight where he it was an action-packed and he had to figure things out. And he could a fight that he could have lost in that particular fight. When it came to the um the Santa Cruz fight, it was the same thing. First half where he had to figure things out. It was a good please go look at those fights and tell me which one of those fights was was a bad fight or a boring fight. Which one of those fights? Which one of those fights can you look at? Go look at those fights and tell me which one wasn't worth the money for those fights. Any one of those. Go look at those and please tell me in the comments after watching those fights again, which one of those wasn't worth the money. They were able to maneuver and set up good fights for this guy to fight. Understanding 
you know, that, like I said, and like I said, the only one you might be able to say would be someone like a Devin Haney, and he would have to sacrifice because Devin Haney ain't taking that low. I don't care what he takes to the Cambosis. It's easy to take low money against Cambosis because it's a fight that you know you're going to win. It's a fight where we've said it a million times. Everybody beats Cambosis. So it's easy to do that fight and get those belts, you know, and put yourself in a position where you're undisputed in that weight class, definitely, you know, against somebody that you know is easy. Against somebody that you know could alter your whole career, you know, please, you're going to you're going to get what the fuck you, you're, you're worth in that particular bout. You're not going to just take small, tiny change in a bout like that against someone that could literally alter your entire career. Because that's what that man can do, regardless of what anybody wants to say. But, you know, if you want to say that bout, you can say, OK, cool that bout. That's about I guess you could say that what's good. Could quote have been made. But besides that, basically, no. No, Gary Russell. Gary Russell, everybody, I remember what people were saying before the Barrios fight. I see how they switched up after the Barrios fight. You know, he fights against a 126-pounder that's jumping up all those weight classes, and he stops him. Ain't nobody giving him no credit. People are going to be like, Devin, he had to come up to 135 pounds because no one will give him any, any bouts in his lower weight class. You know, and Tank is getting no credit for that fight. That's a reality. And people are talking about him fighting him now, like, why would he fight him now when he just came? He's coming off a loss. I could understand if he came back and he beat that guy, killed, beats that guy, you know what I'm saying? Gets revenge on him and shows that, hey, this is the level of fighter I am. This is the caliber of fighter I am. That type of situation. Then it's like, all right, cool. That's the same Gary. Then them maybe fighting. Or then Gary moving up to 130 and fighting someone and showing what he can do at 135. And then them fight. Then it's like, all right, cool. But, you know, but, you know. If that's what he wants to do, cool, let him go do that. Let's see. Let's see who promotes him and how they promote him, you know? Obviously, he's not going to want to go to a top rank because he's going to get jibbed. You're not going to be making the funds you're making now because now you're going to be starting to get jibbed. You're not going to want to go to zone because it's a closed platform. And you see, Eddie, when it comes to getting people fights, it's not it seems to not be have a, you know, an easy time doing that. But you also then put a cap on what you can make. And you like making those 230,000, you know, the money that you're making off those 230,000 uh, plus pay-per-views. You yourself are bringing home probably six plus million off every single one of those fights uh, just on the pay-per-view side alone, you know. So because of, you know, and then when it comes to the building up for the fights and everything, LRB and them have been doing a great job. Who's going to be doing that? Tom Brown? Their, their representatives? You're not a talker like that. You don't talk. You know, you're quiet for the most part. You know, so and they've been able to do a very good job when it comes to that. You know, especially when you didn't talk at all. They were able to help you progress up. You know, so who's going to be able to do what they're doing? You know, and if they can't get you those other fights, what fights are they getting you exactly? Because they're not going to be able to get you the quote fights that you want. So, you know, but me personally, I think it's going to be a situation where they're going to talk. Regardless if though he's saying he's quote going to be out. I think they're still going to be working together just due to the fact that this is the way he was acting last time before he signed an extension. He was talking all this crap about them. They were trash and talking. He was trash talking, being all negative. And at the end of the day, he ended up signing right back up with them because it was the best situation for him. It was the best thing for him to do. So when it comes to this again, after this bout is done, I think they'll be able to work out their differences because, you know, he's going to, you know, he's not leaving PBC. He's staying with Al Heyman. Al Heyman's going to tell him they're doing the best job as pushing you. They're doing the best job at promoting you, you know. They are. <laughs> no one else is gonna be do be able to do as good a job as they're doing. So, I see him staying. But if he doesn't, cool. He has that option too. He can stay with PBC. I guess they can do promotions with you know these other outlets, and we'll see how that works out. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.